let us go to Barter syndrome. Okay. Barter syndrome is also called as inherited furosemide. Okay. So, whenever the question is about Barter syndrome, think about the action of furosemide. So, what does it do? It blocks the sodium potassium to chloride transporter. But it is not as simple as that because Barter syndrome here blocks more than one channel. So, just recollecting the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle, here there was NKC22, N sorry, NKCC2, that is sodium potassium 2 chloride channel. Okay. Next, here was the ROMK, which was throwing out the potassium. The function of this was intake of sodium, intake of potassium, and intake of to chloride right and the chloride was taken absorbed into the cell by the CLCNB channel and for it to act it required the help of a subunit called Barter. So, each of this deficiency can cause uh, Barter syndrome okay uh, deficiency or each, each of its defects. So, first is neonatal Barter syndrome okay. So, which is autosomal recessive inheritance it is because of the defect in the sodium potassium 2 chloride or this transporter okay. The second is also neonatal Barter syndrome I told you that neonatal will have three types right that is because of a defect in this ROMK channel okay. The third is um, called as transient neonatal barter. It is X-linked that mostly recovers by itself. So, I am not going into the details of that. Next is the, this we call it as third which is classic barter syndrome. This is also autosomal recessive. This is because of the defect in the uh, CLCNKB. And fourth is barter syndrome with deafness because of this is of, of involves the barton. Okay. Uh, so, this is with the beta subunit of CLCNV called as uh, Barton channel. So, this is also autosomal recessive. So, Barton syndrome for all practical purpose is an autosomal recessive disorder. Okay. So, rarely there is a type 5 Barton which is called which is the activating mutation of the calcium sensing receptor. Okay, there will be calcium sensing receptor that is present in the basolateral membrane of the thick ascending limb. So, that becomes type 5. So, these are the types of Barter syndrome. Now, how do we differentiate between the types of Barter syndrome? Type 1 and 2 what happens? It causes high urinary calcium excretion and nephrocalcinosis. Let me explain why this happens. So, this is the channel right. Here uh, we learned that there will be NK2CC uh, channel and here is the ROMK channel. And here was the paracellular absorption of calcium and magnesium right. So, uh, though the sodium and potassium and chloride transport through this was electroneutral, the potassium coming out increases the positive luminal potential. Because of this what happens to maintain the electro neutrality calcium and magnesium gets absorbed okay into the body. Now, imagine these two pathways are not working that is potassium is not coming into the cell because NKC22 is NKCC2 is blocked or potassium is not exiting the cell because ROMK is blocked. So, what is going to happen? There is not going to be no positive potential in the lumen. So, calcium and magnesium are not reabsorbed, right. So, this will cause hypercalciuria and nephrocalcinosis, okay. So, this is the mechanism by which only type 1 and type 2 will have nephrocalcinosis. But type 3 and 4 will not have any effect of calcium absorption because those two types are based on this chloride channel. It has nothing to do with the cations, uh, potassium or sodium okay, or a lumen electropositive potential. So, uh, anything that involves this chloride channel and this Barton will not cause nephrocalcinosis. This point is very, very important. It has been asked as an MCQ multiple times. Okay. 
Now that is about how this happens. The type 3 type uh, also called as classic Barter syndrome is also called as mixed Gittelman syndrome that is uh, uh, they can also have hypomagnesemia and some sensory neural hearing loss is seen in these patients okay. What happens is because of this there is increased chloride delivery to the thickening limb okay. The sodium potassium 2 chloride is not working increased chlorium, chlorium gets chloride gets deposited to the thick ascending limb body perceives this as higher volume. So, to cause constriction of the afferent arteriole it releases ren okay and once it releases uh, renin uh, there is going to be increased aldosterone also which causes loss of potassium and H plus causing hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. Also uh, since lot of fluid is lost body senses this has a state of volume depletion leading to release of renin and aldosterone. So, there is secondary hyper aldo steronism okay uh, before the aldosterone gets activated the prostaglandin also gets activated which stimulates the release of renin okay this happens as a part of uh, tubuloglomerular feedback or happens because of hypovolemia okay now clinical features of antenatal it is because of nkcc2 mutation romk mutation and barton mutation okay uh, features are it is antenatal or neonatal. So, there is going to be polyamnios. Why? Because I have already told that the main feature of these conditions are polyuria. There is going to be a loss of lot of sodium and water into the through the urine. So, there is going to be polyamnios which can precipitate premature delivery. Any neonate can have vomiting failure to thrive ok. Uh, once it is born there can be polyuria, hypercalciuria, nephrocalcinosis. This happens only in type 1 and 2 not in the Barton type ok. Diagnosis is by doing prenatal amniotic fluid chloride. If the amniotic fluid chloride is high then it is it should make us suspect about neonatal Barton syndrome ok. Classic is because of CLCKB mutation, the channel uh, mutation. So, basically they present with vomiting, polyuria and recurrent episodes of dehydration and fever. And there can be some carpopedal spasms and fatigue because of loss of magnesium also. Uh, developmental delay can happen, BP is low normal as usual, there is loss of volume because of which BP will be low normal and nephrocalcinosis is absent in this condition ok because there is no problem in reabsorption of calcium. So, as a dictum unless proved otherwise if the question is only about Barter syndrome then you can consider it as having low bar normal BP hypokalemia metabolic alkalosis and last feature it is going to have is nephrocalcinosis because of hypercalciuria ok. Now, be all these are the important features of Barter syndrome. Now, coming to the diagnosis patients are going to have vomiting, they are going to have dehydration, they are going to have low normal blood pressure ok. So, there is no confusion about this. Severe hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis, the excessive sodium that is reaching the uh, collecting duct which has the ENAC channel and also the ROMK channel right. So, there is going to be increased sodium reabsorption along with potassium and H plus loss which is going to lead to hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis ok. Increased urinary chloride and potassium ok. Not just the blockage of sodium potassium 2 chloride will lead to increased urinary so chloride also and potassium also. Hypomagnesemia and hypocalciuria are absent ok. So, generally there will be hypercalciuria right and the magnesium whatever is getting lost in the 
loop of Henle is getting reabsorbed at the distal tubule at the TRMP6 channel because of which generally you do not see hypomagnesemia. So, you see nephrocalcinosis, hypercalciuria, but no hypomagnesemia. Hypomagnesemia is characteristic of Gittelman syndrome. So, you should be uh, careful if the question is coming and patient has hypomagnesemia, then your answer should be more in favor of Gittelman syndrome. Okay. So, treatment when it is neonatal, electrolyte supplementation will be considered as the best treatment. Okay. Uh, the child will be deficient of sodium and potassium, so better to supply that potassium and magnesium supplementation. Spironolactone and triamterene can be considered, which will lead to blockage of the mineralocorticoid receptor and the ENAC channel. So, the effect of hyperaldosteronism can be counteracted. Okay. ACE inhibitors can be tried again to beat the effect of aldosterone. But the one that seems to work is prostaglandin synthase inhibitors. I told once all this sodium potassium chloride is lost in the blood, there is synthesis of prostaglandin which goes and activates the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Okay, So, you are blocking this, you are blocking the prostaglandin synthase. How? By giving COX-2 inhibitor, COX inhibitors like indomethacin, indomethacin or ibuprofen. Okay. Now, how this is going to act? This both these drugs, see prostaglandin has an effect of vasodilatation in the kidney. So, so once this prostaglandin is given, it reduces the cortical perfusion. So, there is going to be vasoconstriction in the cortex. Okay, This will lead to decreased delivery of sodium and chloride to the distal nephron because it is not filtering much. There is reduced sodium and chloride to the distal nephron and no production of aldosterone. So, this is how the prostaglandin synthase inhibitors are going to act. Okay, And so, indomethacin is the treatment that is given for Barter syndrome. So, if they ask uh, which is the treatment for Barter syndrome, the answer should be indomethacin. Now, coming to the outcome, the most, most of these children improve clinically and pubertal and mental development are usually normal. CKD generally does not develop. If develops, it is because of chronic tubulo interstitial nephropathy, which is caused by hypokalemia, hypercalciuria, and nephrocalcinosis. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.